Welcome back, watch people. You join me on a beautiful day out on the beach in Brighton. And uh, I've got a little story for you today, one that I hope you're gonna find very interesting. It's not watch related. This is about you, not about me today. It's about you guys. And you know, I'm a bit, a bit of a philosopher on the side. I do like a little bit of philosophy and a, a good story. And I've spoken to you guys in the past about the legacy that we as men leave behind when we finally go. Uh, the legacy that we leave to our family, our children, our beloved children. The most important thing in the world to all of us, surely. And almost as importantly, the legacy we leave, which is our name, our reputation, um, how we're remembered. I've always said that that is absolutely vital to all of us as men. One of the most satisfying things that I ever get from you guys that watch my channel is when I receive emails saying, Paul, not only have you helped me with my wattage, but you've also helped me become a better person. And they say that you actually die twice. You die the first time when you take your last breath. And then you die a second time when someone utters your name for the very last time. I don't know about you guys, but I intend to live for a very, very long time. Hopefully for all the right reasons. Now I'm going to tell you a story today. A story that I was taught at school when I was a young man and I've never forgot it. It's probably a story that they wouldn't teach in schools today for various reasons, but I feel that it served me well. And it was an old schoolmaster that, that sat us down one afternoon I'll never forget it, it was a bright, sunny summer's day and we were all bored at school and he said, I'll tell you what guys, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you about a captain in the British Army and his name was Reginald Younghusband and he was 34, just short of his 35th birthday when he was killed in a place called Isandwana in South Africa. He was a captain in the British Army during the Victorian period, and he was killed on the 22nd of January, 1879, around about 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And young husband left England a few months earlier with 80 of his men who he had under him, 80 law men that looked up to him and uh, had every respect for him because he'd proven himself as a leader, and as a man, and on that uh, fateful day, January the 22nd, 1879, the British Army suffered their biggest ever defeat at the hands of a non-European army that afternoon, when 20,000 brave Zulu warriors protecting their homeland against the invader converged on the 1,500 redcoats that were left at the camp at Isandwana. Chelmsford, the commander, had split his forces and had taken the majority of his men off in another direction looking for the Zulu army. What he didn't know is, is that they were just a few miles away waiting to converge on the 1500 British soldiers were left. Now, that battle lasted for most of the day. Those 1500 redcoats fought bravely, but were slowly and surely picked off, heavily outnumbered, and by 3.30 in the afternoon, it was pretty much every man for himself. And young husband rallied about 20 of his remaining men that were left of the 80. And they withdrew from the camp to the foot of the, the mountain at Isandwana, where 20 of them made a a last stand, a brave last stand. And young husband running low on ammunition, his men were running out, they were issued with only 70 rounds each. And as their ammo started to run out and the Zulus drew closer and closer, young husband realized that the game was up. And with that, he put down his rifle and took out his saber. And he walked down the line of his men that were remaining, as I say, about 20 of them. And he shook each and every one of them's hand 
thanking them for their service, their bravery, and for their loyalty. And with that, ammo now completely out. Young husband's last thing that he ever did was he bravely led a bayonet charge directly at the Zulus that were heading down them. Of course, every one of them was killed and slaughtered that afternoon. But young husband's bravery, his legacy, wasn't missed by the Zulus themselves, who, unusually for them, had been so taken by young husband's bravery and the bravery of his men that they carried him away from the scene on their shields, took him back to their camp, cut out his heart, cooked it and ate it in the hope that his bravery would somehow impart itself into them. Now, some of you might think, well, what's the moral of this story of a British Army captain that has been dead for many, many years? Well, the moral of the story is this, is that Reginald Young Husband has never died twice. He only ever died once on the 22nd of January, 1879. But he remains alive today on a beach in Brighton in 2021. His legacy remembered. As a father, remembered. A great father, apparently. Great husband, great man. So I guess if you need me to tell you the moral of the story, then it's probably a waste of time me telling you it in the first place. And I'm always saying, guys, that if you want to learn about the future, take a look back in the past and you might learn something. So it's up to us all, isn't it, as individual men, it's up to all of us individually if we die once or if we die twice. What sort of legacy will you leave? How will you be remembered? Think about it, guys. It's quite sobering thought. Yeah, I told you I was a bit of a philosopher, didn't I? You never knew that about me. Philosopher and watch dealer. Right, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed that today. If you did, let me know. If you learned anything, let, you, let me know. And if you hated it, let me know. Thanks for watching. We'll speak again soon.